Hello and welcome to Pure Experiences Online Satsang. Our Satsang is a very good opportunity for every seeker to meet and discuss the spiritual matters regarding the path of knowledge and this is especially useful for newcomers. So if there are any questions, most welcome to ask. Vandita is saying, can we ask something about the Guru person? Yes, if it is related to the path of knowledge, you are most welcome to ask. Vandita is asking, we would love to hear from your ab- about your school years, how they made or warped you as a person. There is hardly anything that is worth remembering. I am trying to recall something, but uh, the school was more like a jail. It was not like a school. So I went there without much interest, but I learned many things. Obviously, if you go to school, there will be some good effect. But most of the school time was very boring, stressful and uh, suffering. So when I passed the school, that was like freedom. And probably that is why there was this deep desire to be free. Because uh, there was this dependency on the family, there was dependency on the society, we need to behave as per their demands and on top of it there was the strict discipline of the school. So till I passed out of the school into the college, it was very very limited life, very very constrained life, hardly any freedom, hardly any choice, hardly any happiness. College time was better because there is more freedom in colleges. And then the job time was exactly same as school time. No freedom. So whenever a seeker finds lack of freedom, there is this intense desire to be liberated. This is more in a seeker compared to ordinary people. Ordinary people are happy to be slaves. They are happy to be dependent and they are happy to be happy to take orders like many religious people. But a seeker wants to be free. The seeker does not want to be told this is right, this is wrong, this is true, this is false. The seeker will not tolerate these things. A spiritual person does not like confinement of any kind, physical, mental and spiritual. So hopefully that will encourage many people. Vandita is asking, wasn't there any teacher in client spiritually? No. <laughs> Even if they were, they were not allowed to teach students because, you see, as soon as you say spiritual words, the people from other communities, they feel offended. You know who, what communities they are. And that is why these topics were not allowed in the school. So in the school, you will never get any spiritual knowledge. In the college, you will never get. In your job, you will never get it. So that is why when you become free from all these social prisons, you will get knowledge then the liberation happens. You will gain nothing from school or any other such social setup, not even in your family. Krishna Kumar is asking, is path of inquiry the same as path of knowledge? I never heard about the path of inquiry. Whatever we know is path of knowledge. This is also called the Gyan Marg or Gyan Yog or Jnana Yog. There is no official path of inquiry. Probably somebody called it like this. But uh, the inquiry is just a small part of the path of knowledge. You listen, then you contemplate, that is inquiry. Try to find questions and answers and then abiding. So whatever we call a self-inquiry is a simple method on the path of knowledge. The path of knowledge is much bigger. You can say inquiry is a method on the path of knowledge. So sometimes some gurus, they invent something new and they call it their own path. They they like to name it differently. So unless you go and study that, you will never come to know what it is. So as you know, there are like 50 kinds of yogas nowadays. Why is that? Because originally there was only one, which is the Patanjali's Ashtang Yoga. What happened is different teachers, they customized it, they added things. They removed something and they named it differently. But so from the name, you will never come to know what it is. You will need to join the path. You will need to meet the teacher 
and only then you will come to know what it is and that also when you know the original also when you have studied the original when you have practiced in the original path then only you will come to know how this is same or different from the original so path of inquiry whoever created that path will be able to tell you still you will not know because listening about the path is very different from walking on the path the spiritual lifestyle is very much practical you will go to any website on the internet and there will there will be description like this that we provide you mental peace we provide you prosperity and fast evolution and uh, enlightenment and so on and when you pay the money when you enter the ashram you will find 10 years of hard work then postures and meditations of different kinds and after 20 years still you will find that you are simply working there is nothing that was promised so from the description of these things we will never come to know so my suggestion is always that what do you want tell me what do you want what do you want to achieve and a proper method will be told if you are asking about this path tell me about this path tell me about that path what happens here that means you don't know what do you want you are scanning these things to find out something which you can do the hobby project which book can i buy today let me search but spirituality is not like this there must be a deep desire in you to seek and then you go to the guru and then you put your wish before the guru that i want to know this thing or i want to become like this then a suitable path will be told to you rahul is asking i have observed that when i am alone it is peaceful and layer activity reduces naturally but when people are around and i have to respond to them for worldly matters activity slowly increases and i find myself longing for awareness how to deal with this this is natural people are the cause of disturbance especially those who are not very useful for you you have nothing to do with them and they simply take your time if you if you have something to do that means it is important for you to talk to somebody to meet somebody then there won't be any stressful situation so first you should minimize the interaction first thing we tell people that do not meet people when it, when it is not needed do not go in crowded places and so on but if it is extremely important then you must meet and then the activity should not be a problem there has to be activity otherwise your work will not be done the unimportant part should be avoided not the important you should welcome the activity there you should not say that look again my peace is disturbed this machine of the mind is made to work if you do not put it to work it will rot you will become like a stone dummy so you must encourage the activity that is beneficial if you have this kind of uh, assumption that i must keep all the activity minimum all the time then you will become rock that is not the goal in the path of knowledge now he has mentioned awareness awareness is not a substitute of activity awareness is above the activity awareness means whatever is happening you pay attention you let it happen in knowledge then i am the witness of this activity i am the witness of this event it is not that when there is nothing there is awareness there can be awareness when there is no activity but that is useless what is the use of that the real use of awareness is when you are in the world when you are interacting with people doing your job working traveling there the awareness is most important and probably you are thinking that probably if nobody meets me i'll be more aware no that means you understood the practice wrongly awareness is simply whatever is happening i am the witness there is knowledge this much is awareness so there is no problem if there is something going on you need to be completely aware of it awareness does not mean silencing the activity it means witnessing the activity on this path we do not silence the mind but yes if it becomes too noisy and the factor is external to you some person some situation some place then you do your job and get out of there it is intelligent to not stay there 
if your room is hot it is intelligent to turn on the ac or fan there is no need to tolerate because the factors are external to you but if you are stuck with something which must be done then it should be done in awareness awareness will never be a problem in action actions it actually makes the actions better you will be more confident you will be more peaceful sweet and you can also do some acting if you don't like that person if you don't like those people just act nicely the acting is lying but the lying is happening in awareness so what happens you do not do accidentally that action which can have some kind of consequence in future we need to avoid that kind of action so acting causes some good actions avoids impulsive actions simply act as if you like that person act as if every, everything is normal even though your mind is saying i need to get out of here when your work is finished get out of there there is no need to go there again but saying that activity is causing loss of awareness is wrong understanding of awareness so hopefully that will clear your doubt so for the benefit of everybody else i'll just add that why do we tell you to do sitting practices focus on this close your eyes focus on breathing it is like weight lifting practice you cannot lift 50 kg on the first day if you have never lifted any weight you cannot lift 50 kg in the same way you just start on the awareness practice then it will be impossible to remain aware in the daily life so we isolate you just like the newcomer gets only 5 kg or 10 kg to lift or sometimes sometimes only warm up exercise to warm up the muscles and so on same way we make you sit without any distraction so that you get a glimpse of what is awareness you lift only 5 kg first day then after one month you will see that there is a little bit of awareness when you are doing your daily activity when you are living your life little bit that is equal to you lifting 10 kg or 15 kg in the gym because little bit practice has happened but you still do the warm up you still start start with 5 kg or 10 kg do it for 15 minutes same way when you start your day you sit for 5 minutes 10 minutes taste the awareness bring it that is like warm up and then the whole day you must lift the big weight the burden of the life it must be done in awareness so what happens is sometimes people think that oh, i am aware when i am sitting alone in my room but i am not aware when the life is happening so they try to avoid that activity actions or people and that is their fault that is called the faulty exercise faulty practice so those who think that i need to be aware only when i am alone they are missing something that means that for your whole life you will keep lifting only 5 kg when will you become body bodybuilder when will you grow the strength so challenge yourself go in the social situations and try to keep your awareness on challenge yourself that is called the intention intention building sankalp today i need to meet my boss and uh, he is going to fire me <laughs> i have not done the job because i was meditating all day so go in front of your boss in complete awareness and you will see your actions will be so nice perfect some people ask me what are the benefits of path of knowledge and i tell them no <laughs> there is no benefit you will be reduced to nothing there is loss but these are the benefits for those who are practicing correctly they will reap the benefits but we never tell these things because the goal of the path of knowledge is knowledge not benefits there is no advertising here false promise because the benefit may not appear who knows depending on the impurities but knowledge will be there that much is guaranteed on the path of knowledge that i'll tell you the evidence now do whatever you want with it this is the essence of path of knowledge look what are you seeing this is the evidence that it is like this and the guru disappears it is very simple then depending on the interest of the person we go in depth then as the seeker the student grows in his intelligence logical ability rationality more is given otherwise we say that look you got knowledge now you live your life happily peacefully blissfully enjoy sandesh is saying can you explain about the observer is the observed yes that is right that which is witnessing 
is actually witnessing itself. What it is witnessing? Its own illusory forms. And then we give it a name. It is called the existence. In Sanskrit, we call it the Brahman. The existence is witnessing itself in illusory forms. This is the whole knowledge. This is the complete knowledge. It is the observer, yes. What it is observing? Itself. So the observer is the observed. These two aspects are of the one existence. They are not two. They are not two different realities. One reality appearing as two. Will it become like this because I told you so? No. You will need to get the evidence. How is it possible? You will say. I am Brahman. It means that. But uh, how is it possible? And now you must take up the path. It is same as learning mathematics. You can go to a teacher in the college and uh, you draw a circle and ask the teacher, what is the area of the circle? And the teacher will just give you a number. The teacher will say like 120.325 something. Answer is there. But will you be satisfied with that answer? Okay, I'll go home now. Teacher is always right. No. Any intelligent person will ask, how did you get that area? Now some of some teachers will tell, look, this is the formula. And some people will go home. Okay, probably he knows the formula, which I don't know. I'll just memorize the formula. Is that the seeker? No. Practical person, isn't it? The seeker will say, tell me how you got the formula. And now the teacher says, okay, come in. Join the school. One, two, three, four. Count. One plus one. One plus two. Two plus two. Okay. After five years, geometry. Derivation of the formula. So that is the life of a seeker. Ordinary people, they ask one question and the guru tells them one line and they go home. They are not seekers. There will be some. No, I don't believe you. Tell me which from which book you read it. Tell me the source. As if the book is the valid source. They ask like this. And the teachers tell them the book. This is the book. Here it is written in Sanskrit. Do you understand Sanskrit? No, I don't. And that means it is correct. Because you don't understand it. It is old language. That means it is the ultimate truth. And these people again, again they go home blindly believing. I am not saying that it is wrong. But they don't have the intelligence to ask. Or they are, they are conditioned so much. They are conditioned to believe that this book is right. That book is wrong. Sanskrit is right. Other languages are wrong. So they seek that kind of answer. If they don't get it. They say, no, you are wrong. So many people do not know the value of evidence. They do not know what is evidence. And even when the evidence is presented, they are unable to find it. They are unable to find the answers by themselves. So a good student is very difficult to find. So observer is the observed, yes. Now start your journey to validate, verify this knowledge. And it is very easy actually on the path of knowledge it takes 2-3 hours. If you join the program 6 months. It is same as you know somebody who has little bit of education. Knows a little bit of mathematics. And he wants to find the area of some figure. Now in 15 minutes the professor can show how he got the area. We say that the student is ready. So he can get it in 15 minutes. In the same way, if the student is ready on the path of knowledge, has a little bit of intelligence, logical ability and surrender, interest, then he can be shown all the truth in 15 minutes. It is so easy. Those who are not ready, yes, 15 years. That is why this is the direct path. And it is direct only for those who are ready. Who will tell you you are ready or not? The teacher. Student cannot tell. So, those who ask one line questions, my suggestion is always like this, that you will understand nothing. And even if truth is told, they are only words for you. There is no real experience behind them. So, always take systematic path. So, it looks like that uh, today's questions are over and uh, we can conclude today's meeting here. So, thank you everybody for joining today. I'll see you next time.